harbored a secret. People talk about my sons and the evil things they did. Yet still I remain strangely mute. I do not discuss my own actions that day, or the rage I felt when I burned the two linking books that had snared them. Some people believe my sons died in those fires, but the truth is, they did not. You're the only one I can confide in, my friend. So I'm asking you to come to Tamara. There are things I must tell you about my sons. It's really, really cool if you're not afraid of tight spaces. Dad and me aren't, but sometimes Mom has to close her eyes when I'm driving. I think she's not home right now, because I never could have picked you up by myself if she were. Hey, is that a new image recorder you've got? How cool! And you know, I know the perfect spot to use it. Hang on. pretty from here. I remember some of the other times you visited us. You've always liked stopping here. It's one of my favorite spots, too. Go ahead. Take a picture. Just make sure your thumb's not in the shot. Dad always ruins his images that way. Did you get it? I think you should keep it in your journal. That way you can take it out and look at it whenever you miss us. Tell Dad you're here. Come on.
little my friend. So you made it in one piece, so... Isha's driving wasn't too erratic, I hope. <laughs> well, you're probably wondering why I asked you. you know, the truth is, I, I need your help. As you know, my son, Cyrus and Akinaw, were trapped 20 years ago after they destroyed many of the ages I'd written. At the time, Catherine and I decided to leave them imprisoned because we'd hoped it might reform them. And uh, now Catherine believes our son should be released. But I need an objective opinion. I must find out if either Cyrus or Akinaw deserve to be freed, and you're the only one we can trust. Remember my old crystal viewer? I've made some changes to it, and I haven't yet calibrated its sound component. Um, it'll actually be quicker if we do this together, and I can show you the two prison ages before we link to them. So if you step to the panel behind you, we can begin. Okay, I'm going to transmit a waveform that's being generated by the first prison age. It will appear as a yellow line in your right-hand monitor. Here it comes. In order to hear Haven, we must manipulate the blue line until it exactly matches that waveform. The blue line is the result of two combined signals, which we'll manipulate separately using the three dials, amplitude, frequency, and phase. But first, we have to select a signal to manipulate, so move the slider left or right. Now turn the leftmost dial to adjust the signal's amplitude or volume. The amplitude's pretty close now. Now turn the dial on the far right to adjust the signal's phase. Try selecting a different signal. Adjust the leftmost dial. The left dial seems well adjusted. Try turning the center dial to adjust the signal's frequency. Got it. Hang on a second, I'll lock in the adjustments and send you the waveform for Spire, the second prison age. Here it comes. Try the leftmost dial. The amplitude seems fine. Reposition the phase. No, not the frequency. Try the center dial. No, no, not the phase. Try moving the slider to select a different signal. Adjust the leftmost dial. The left dial seems well adjusted. Try the phase dial, it's the one on the right. Try moving the slider. Try selecting a different signal. Oh, that dial was okay. Turn it back. Try moving the slider to select a different signal. Try the amplitude. That's the leftmost dial. Try moving the slider. Try adjusting the phase. N no, that's the frequency dial. Try moving it right. The phase's positioning seems fine. Now adjust the center dial. Uh, try slowing down the frequency. The frequency's not right. The speed's not good. Less frequency. Frequency's pretty close now. Try the leftmost dial. A bit quieter. Try moving the slider to select a different signal. Try the frequency, that's the center dial. The frequency needs to be faster. The speed's not good. The frequency seems fine. Try the phase dial, it's the one on the right. 
You've got it. Don't change a thing. I'll just lock it in here. Ah, got it. Well done, my friend. You should be able to hear both prison ages now. So let's begin, shall we? What in the name? Ah. What a mess. The image modulator short-circuited. Wires are completely fused. Well, the viewer itself seems okay. So maybe if I link to rhyme. All right. A slight change in plans, my friend. Explosion must have shut down the main power supply and damaged the viewer's external image modulator. There's another one on Rhyme, so I'm gonna link there and retrieve it. I'll... I'll have to stop at the cleft for some tools first. Um, why don't you get full power restored while I'm gone? Go to the water wheel control room. Close both emergency release gates, then come back here and use the crystal viewer to contact me. The, uh, the crystal combination to see Rhyme is in my journal. Oh, uh, you'll have to turn on the roof antenna before the viewer will work. Keep an eye on Yisha, will you? I'll be back. See this. Shh. Don't worry, he'll come back. It's his favorite sleeping spot. My necklace showed it to me. Got it two weeks ago on an age called Serenia. Shows me all kinds of stuff. You think that's strange that my necklace shows me things? Dad does. He says a lot of things I've seen on Serenia aren't real. My brothers believe me, though. Thank you. 
Let me guess. Dad blew the power again, didn't he? He does that a lot. Mom made him install an extra power box in here just in case. Oh no! This box is supposed to make sure certain things always work in the house. There aren't enough rows lit up correctly. Only a green light on top of a failed row means something's getting power. I wonder if we can move them. Better not. Mom doesn't like me messing with electrical stuff. Come on, little guy, let's go see our friends. Hey, I never know this stuff before. It's so cool. I think my beetles are making a nest. to show this to dad soon as he gets home. He loves this kind of stuff. talk right now. I'm trying to remember the song I learned on Serenia, but it's really hard. I've got to get it perfect because I promised to play to my brother next time I see him.
such a good day. I wish... Oh, I wish so many things, Atris. Tell me again we did the right thing.
spire, I've called it. For that's the image I kept in mind as I wrote the book that would link here. A soaring rock and crystal spire rising out of dense clouds, like the watchtower of some gem-studded castle. Now that I'm here and am exploring the age in person, I find it to be exactly as I had envisioned. Beautiful, yet so very deceptive. From the tower formation upon which I sit, an ocean of clouds spreads out below me. Rough stone steps descend toward them, ending at an empty terrace area. Created over centuries by the erosive power of wind, these steps are so evenly matched that I almost believe they were man-made. Yet... How could they be? For Spire has never had any inhabitants. Steps are not the only example of how the illusion I sought to create in this age holds true. Shortly after linking here, I walked through massive archways of stone, searching for a view beneath the clouds. As I walked, I felt as if the ghosts of a past civilization walked with me. This feeling was only enhanced by the beautiful harmonic sounds heard everywhere I went. I would have liked to determine the source of these sounds, simply for my own edification, but other... Concerns must take precedence. Having found the flora caverns and assured myself of Spire's ability to support human life, I'm at last ready to leave. I even feel more comfortable with my decision to use this age as a prison world if I must. Yet I am sad to leave it too. There is still so much I could learn about the art simply by spending more time here, comparing the age with my original intentions for it. Unfortunately, once I link away, Dropping my misbook into the clouds as I leave. I know I will never be back. And I truly must go, for I still have another prison age to investigate. Never be discouraged by a mistake, Atrus. My grandmother, Anna, always used to say. Strive to learn from it instead, and you will achieve great things. Today on Haven, I saw my grandmother's words become truth. The broken ship merged into the causeway near Haven's coastline is exactly what I'd hoped it would be. A promise of intrigue and adventure so palatable it made my own heart race with excitement to see it. I thought of how much fun the boys I'd met in Stone Ship Age. Emmett, Branch, and Will would have had playing in it, and almost wish I could bring their children here to do so. But Haven must remain off-limits to all if it's to become the prison world I wrote it to be. My sole foray into the age has proved it to be capable of supporting human life, though of course none exists there at this time. Much of Haven's interior is comprised of a dense tropical rainforest which is obviously teeming with beasts. I saw several as I explored, though they usually kept their distance. A few of the fruit eaters did stare at me curiously as I made my way under their nests. No doubt, having never encountered a human being before, they did not think to fear me. They might even have summoned the courage to become friends had I stayed there any longer. Alas, I could not, for the weight of urgency was upon me. Having convinced myself of the need to protect my missed library should some overly greedy explorer stumble onto it, I felt it necessary to link home very quickly taking only a few brief minutes to watch the sun set over Haven's freshwater lake. I swam out to the middle and linked away. By now, the linking book I used will have sunk underwater and have been destroyed. Consequently, there remains but one task to finish before I can sleep. I must write two additional linking books tonight, one for Haven and one for Spire, my other prison age, then place them on display in the library. I shall also have to warn Cirrus and Akinar to stay away from them, and tell Catherine, of course, when all is finished. Thank you, my love. For what? For everything. For this. 
and for showing me again and again that no matter how many mistakes we've made, the ending has not yet been written. Your father's linking home tonight. Why don't we use the special plates?
Monday. I got this book. Dad gave it to me. I'm going to write in it every night. Tuesday. In the morning, we worked on long division. After dinner, I made a puzzle. Mom and me started the fun club and looked at stars. Thursday. I didn't do much. Sunday. We visited my brother today. He had a gift for me, but Dad... made me go home before I could see it. I felt bad. Dad talked to me later and said it was just bones, so I shouldn't be scared. I wasn't, because I don't think Agnar meant it to be bad. He looked so sad when we left. Monday. It was hot. I spent the whole day by the water. Saturday. Dad took me to a really neat place today. It's called Serenia, and the people there are so nice. They never forget stuff, because if they do, their memory chamber remembers it for them. I went inside, and I saw all the memory globes hanging from the ceiling, just like Sarah said I would. Monday. Mom said it's too soon to go back to Serenia. I've been thinking, though, and I don't know if I want my memories put inside a globe when I'm dead. What if I need them? Thursday. I told both Cirrus and Agnar about the fun club. They want to join. Wednesday. Dad finally said we could go see Anya tomorrow. She takes care of the memory chamber. She's one of its protectors. Only women can be protectors. Men stay in the village and do other hard stuff, like fixing roofs. Thursday. I saw the coolest creature on Serenia today. It was made of water, but when it saw me looking, it got shy and fell apart. Dad said it must have been a fish. Jumping, because he didn't see it. Mom believed me, though. Friday. Anya told me her people put their memories in globes so their families can visit them in the dream world. She said I could visit the dream world too, but I'd have to learn how. Plus, I need a spirit guide. Maybe I can get one next time we visit. Sunday. I got the best gift of all time today. A spirit guide statue. Cyrus carved it for me himself. It looks kind of funny, but it's because he never saw one. He just went with what I told him. He knows exactly what questions to ask, and he listens better than anyone. Friday. Before supper, Dan and me changed the lock on my bookshelf. I said since I'm learning Donnie, I could change the covers and use everyone's name instead. I won't forget. Who's older than who either? He said it really, really had to be the really last time, but he was glad. Thursday. We didn't do much, but tomorrow I start learning how to dream on Serenia. I'll probably be too busy to write in this journal for months. Sunday. Anya gave me a special necklace today. It's really good at picking up memories. She says some things are better at holding them than others, and that only the most powerful memories get shown. I touched it as soon as I got home, and it worked. I can't wait to show all my friends. ceremony on Serenia next week? Anya told me you're getting a special necklace to go with it.
This is only part of our family tree, Yisha. If we wanted to, we could trace our lineage all the way back to when our ancestors first arrived in Dunny. If you insist on blowing the power so often, then you must make sure we have some kind of backup supply. What if someone gets stuck in the elevator? The poor thing. Cyrus said he tried everything he could, but it just didn't like living in his garden. A few days in here, and I bet you it will look much better. really, really cool if you're not afraid of tight spaces. Dad and me aren't, but sometimes Mom has to close her eyes when I'm driving. I think she's not home right now, because I never could have picked you up by myself if she were. Hey, is that a new image recorder you've got? How cool! And you know, I know the perfect spot to use it. Hang on.
design means we won't have to go to Rhyme anymore. We'll be able to view our son's ages from right here.
patience, my love. We've almost finished the linking chamber. There's just the security seal to install. But we will see our sons again soon, I promise you. I guess I didn't back then. I was having too much fun learning other stuff. I was pretty stupid back then. Here, maybe you should try learning now. With me. Really? You'll teach me? Dunny. Why not? Somebody should.
double passed through both loops. Beautiful knot. Let's just hope the linking book is down there. Looks like those circuit lessons you drilled into me in Voltaic have finally paid off, Father. Of course, figuring out how to complete this electrical network was ten times more difficult, seeing how I had to build everything from scratch. electricity out there to be gathered by my conductors. <laughs> now, to stop wasting it in a useless display of light and actually channel it somewhere. slip-ups this time. I really do not want to lose another ship. Guard magnet is on, docking station conductors are charged and ready. Here goes. Thank you. 
run these calculations a million times. Counterbalance the magnetic forces perfectly, otherwise the ship won't get out of the dock. And you do want to get out of the dock, don't you? After all these years of trying? scientific principle I know tells me these rocks shouldn't be floating. And yet, somehow, they are. Don't know how you did it, Father. But if you can write it, I can certainly use it. Your faith in me is truly amazing, Mother. How long before I kill this one? It appears that I have underestimated him. I did not think he could be this devious. He always said Spire was dangerous, but I assumed him and its people were violent. Violent and potentially xenophobic. The perfect combination with which to orchestrate a coup. But there are no people here. No prosperous civilization for me to rule. I see now how his linking panel fooled me. Congratulations, Father. This hand goes to you. I have established a temporary encampment near the Vegetal Cavern. The food I brought with me should last a month. After that, I will be forced to grow what I eat. The plants here are neither scrumptious nor overly abundant. But I have tasted several and find the nutrition is there. Turning now to the question of escape. I believe there may yet be a missed linking book here. The simplest way for Father to have disposed of it would have been to jump off the palace as he touched it. There are other ways, of course, but I cannot ignore this possibility. I must at least attempt to reach the ground. This is fast becoming unacceptable. I have slid down every oddly shaped windpipe in this age, and have yet to see below the second cloud layer. I was fairly certain that at least three of the passages would prove successful. Yet even they dead-ended inside a magnificent sealed cavern full of crystals. The crystals themselves are curious. Something about their inner matrix makes them susceptible to a buildup of negative charges. When I touched one, I received a terrible shock. At the same time, the faint light that had been emanating from the crystal faded, and I heard a very curious hum, which ceased as soon as the crystal's charge was expended. I should like to study these crystals more thoroughly, 
and will institute a plan to mine the cavern extensively. Last night, I saw lights flickering in some of the other palaces. It occurred to me that I might not be alone. What if this age is like stone ship? Father never could explain how Emmett and Branch just appeared there. He said the art was always surprising him. Could it be that the lights I saw flickering were made by other people? What I would give to discover this is true. After all these months of solitude, just to have another person to talk to. About the floating rocks. There is a phosphorescent green mineral running through much of this age which exhibits strong diamagnetic properties. At least that is the most workable hypothesis I have devised that can explain how the rocks I see outside my garden are able to float. This has given me an idea. If I can capture one of the larger boulders, I should be able to turn it into a vessel and thereby sail across the clouds to the nearest palace. The most difficult obstacle to achieving this will be maintaining the necessary altitude. I have noticed that these rocks float higher than the highest point on that palace. Forcing my ship to float lower than it prefers will take some doing. For the past few weeks, I've been watching storms move through the second cloud layer. They appear as flashes of light inside the strata. The violence of these storms does not reach me in the garden. I encounter no rain, barely feel the wind. I am completely safe here, nestled between layers. I do not know how this is possible. How could Father have created a world which exhibits so many scientific impossibilities? He never did explain how to write an age. He never taught Agnar or I the art. I wonder now if I should have insisted. The crystals I mine from the lower cavern are really quite remarkable. There seems to be no limit to the amount of electricity they can store. Unfortunately, this makes working with them difficult. So long as a charged crystal is isolated, the energy inside it remains trapped in its matrix. But the moment the crystal even brushes against a grounded object, stored charge flows out, producing a most amazing song. I should like to capitalize on this singing ability, if only as a pleasant diversion. It might be nice to hear some music in these caverns. Regardless, I believe the crystals can solve my rock ship problem. By affixing them to some of the floating rocks, then casting them back into the clouds, I should be able to harness enough of Spire's natural electricity to fuel an electromagnet. The attractive force of the magnet, combined with the smaller magnetic fields of the lightning conductors, should be able to lower the ship and guide it to the nearest palace. It is definitely worth an attempt. Another storm is brewing as I write this. I can feel the hairs on my arms starting to rise. I'm almost crazed with anticipation, waiting to test the first conductor. My god, is this what Father felt? Every time his hand hovered above the panel of a book he'd just written? Did he feel this much excitement as he stood poised to learn of his theories and worked? Why did he never share this with me? If he had, perhaps things could have been different between us. The first conductor is glowing. Here goes nothing. No, 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 no! My calculations were perfect. The ship should not have broken free. The distance between the conductors must be too great. I'm going to have to add more to the system, but if I do, the electromagnetic pull will be too strong and the ship will crash to the floor. So can I counterbalance it? Create a second electromagnet in the roof of the garden. I am going to have to start building again and capture another rock for a ship. This mistake has set me back years. But I am close, so close to reaching the nearest palace and from there maybe accessing the ground. 
I only hope the linking book still works. Remarkable. No change to its molecular structure, no build-up of illumination inside. As long as the crystal remains grounded, electricity just passes straight through it. Interesting. Has to be fake. Has to be. But will getting to it allow me to finally reach the ground? Have to know. Have to get over there.
have to do it. Have to set up the network correctly so that enough power flows into the throne. It's the only way to reach the right frequency. Electricity being gathered out there. And as soon as I finish wiring this circuit, it'll go straight through the throne to where I need it the most. Can you hear the music yet, Father? <laughs> that? You had me, Father. You totally had me. And now you're leaving your queen wide open? Getting the narrow chest pieces out of you was more of a challenge than this.
mincing rock test number 29. Yes, this should be it. This should be the one. Long now, Father. Not long before I show you exactly what a smart little girl can do.
get the right frequency. When they slip out of tune, these cables sound worse than mother's caterwauling! The inner matrix wants to hold on to an electrical buildup indefinitely, but it loses it as soon as the crystal touches a grounded object. So, how to keep the crystals isolated until I can use them? Something has happened. There is a structure in the spire that was not there nine days ago when I sailed off to harvest more crystals. Its existence is impossible. Yet I have stood inside its foyer and know that it is real. I'm forced to make an inconceivable deduction. Somehow, my father is still alive. I do not understand how this can be, regardless, given the design of the chamber and in particular its barred dividing wall. I suspect that our reunion will be tense. Fifteen years. Still, it is not enough for him. This age was nothing when I arrived. Nothing but floating rocks and debris. I am the one who made it livable, and I did so without help from any quarter. If I could have found just one single person to assist me. But no. He does not want to talk about accomplishments. All he wants to talk about are the books. Yes, I burned them, Father. I am sorry. Now, can we put the past aside and let me out of here? Another wasted evening playing repentant sinner in his linking chamber. I do not know why I even waste my time. It is obvious he will never be convinced. But what of Mother? 
Her endless hand wringing is as maddening as ever, yet there must be some way I can use it. Perhaps if I play upon her guilt, create a sculptural vignette which she can see inside their viewer, if I choose the appropriate memory, it should convince her that I, too, have my regrets. This is intolerable. If he did not intend to set me free, why create the chamber in the first place? To flaunt his all-powerful skill? I get it, Father. Really, I do. Everything I have accomplished here pales in comparison to what you can do with the art. It is the one power you have that I shall never defeat. No wonder you refuse to teach it to me. I will take this no longer. It is time I showed him some of my power. Father believes this... ...chamber to be impenetrable. But he's forgotten the very laws he once explained to me. Frequency and molecular vibration. The crystals can do it. If I find the right frequency, their song can set off a vibration that will tear through the chamber on a molecular level. Those impenetrable walls will shatter like glass. No doubt I will need a great deal of electricity to do it. I'd better retune the musical instrument. I have a sister? I do not know what to think. It is something I never even considered. I must not let it affect me. There's too much work to be done. I need to get more power to the cables. Building additional conductors will take too long. But if I dismantle parts of the rocket ship network, then rewire the remainder directly into the throne, But if his chamber is breached, there will be no need. It is no use. He will never teach me the art. Questioning him about it only makes him suspicious. Perhaps, with him out of the picture, I can learn it from the dunny. I cannot proceed without a sample. I've tried shipping off pieces from the chamber using every possible method save the crystal, but my efforts have all proven fruitless. How can I convince him to give me a piece, or better yet, a set of matching pieces? This will require a very delicate touch. I wonder if he still enjoys playing. So that was my dear little sister. I see now why he's so taken with her. She's only a child, and yet, several times during our discussion, I caught her studying me, attempting to ascertain what to believe. How much have they told her, I wonder? I don't even care. It's obvious they value her more than they ever did Akinar and me. Very well, then. I shall use even that to my advantage. Retrofitting of the old crystal cavern proceeds on schedule. The loss of my lab was a setback, for I cannot continue frequency tests until all the cavern walls are removed. But that explosion has made me very cautious. I would rather dangle over the stars than have solid rock walls explode on top of me. No! He cannot do this! Why is he bringing her into this? I will not allow it. I will not allow a mere child to have that much power over me. How dare he agree to teach her the art? There must be a way. Some way to get the knowledge from her. But how? Go ahead, father. Go ahead and teach her. If you insist on giving this power to Yisha, then I will make sure you're also giving it to me. I have found the frequency.
knew you'd have one. I was starting to worry about you. In the dream, you always arrived before Third Bell had rung. Welcome to Serenia. I am Anya, one of six now serving as protector here. You may find this hard to believe, but my sisters and I dreamed you would be coming. You're searching for Yisha. I fear she may be in trouble. We have not seen her since we gave her the necklace two weeks ago. I will gather my sisters to help find her. In the meantime, you should consult the memory chamber. She always knows more about what's going on in this land than we do. Follow the ceremonial alley to her doors and see what insight she has to provide.
use their harvester? Are you crazy? What if somebody notices? You think you can hold your breath long enough? Go right ahead. But we can't begin the tests without at least a few empty memory globes, which only grow down there. Fine. But you're stealing the filled ones if we need them. This is terrible. How are we supposed to maintain contact with the ancestors if we can't harvest any globes? Forgive me. I've seen your face so often in dream, I forget you're still a stranger here. You've been inside the memory chamber. You've seen the colorful lights crowning her walls. These are the memories of my people, taken from their bodies after their spirits moved on. In Serenia, the memory chamber stores our memories so that future generations can still visit us in dream. Empty globes for storing our memories are formed underwater, and we gather them using the harvester. So if I'm unable to fix it, I must see how bad the damage is. Oh, I was supposed to tell you, a few of my sisters have gathered in the Hall of Spirits to dream. If you go there after they've awakened, you might be able to learn more about what happened to Yisha. Good luck. stores our memories so that future generations can still visit us in dream. Empty globes for storing our memories are formed underwater, and we gather them using the harvester. So if I'm unable to fix it, I must see how bad the damage is. Oh, I was supposed to tell you, a few of my sisters have gathered in the Hall of Spirits to dream. If you go there after they've awakened, you might be able to learn more about what happened to Yisha. Harvester. You're the memory chief. 
chamber my ancestor used many years ago. We had to abandon that chamber because it was getting old. The pollens inside the chamber can get deadly when that happens. Maybe we could take the parts and, and use them to fix this one. many years ago. We had to abandon that chamber because it was getting old. The pollens inside the chamber can get deadly when that happens. She will be all right, won't she? I mean, you won't stop looking until you find her. Yisha used to come here every morning when she stayed with us and spend hours feeding these butterflies. I think she appreciated them more than anyone else in her family, including Cirrus and Akinar. I wasn't a protector when the brothers lived here, but I gather they were more interested in the memory chamber and our funeral rites. As if death were something to be feared. We must trust in the guidance of the ancestors. If they offer any new insight, I will pass it along. He represents this whole area, and how everything is interconnected. By water? It is the source of all life. who are still alive sleep in the village. It's not what you think. 
I'm just taking it for a little while. Borrowing it, so to speak. It's the plan. Cirrus's plan. He's got Yisha. Uh, I just want to stop him. He's a nutcase. He's here. And don't let father come here, or you'll screw up everything. Find my journal. The one from 20 years ago. Cyrus doesn't even know that I kept one. I hid it in a stone pillar in the forest near where two rivers are crossing. It'll explain everything. Cyrus is mad. He's gonna kill father. I've gotta stop him. Remember, Agnar, we have to be discreet about this. The protectors rarely come this way anymore, but if anyone sees us bringing materials inside... Give me some credit. I was already planning on working at night. After the protectors have gone home,
Let's work together, he says. Let's figure out how to get rid of Father before he sees what we've done to his precious books. Sure. I'll work with you again, little brother, but I'll trust you about as far as I can throw you. It's been a while since I had this much fun working with my sick little brother. Usually we're at each other's throats by now, but this time... Must be the thrill we both get picturing Father strapped into the chair, begging us not to do what he knows we're going to. Don't think anything I've done to a prisoner yet will compare with that moment. Have to build a chair first, though which means getting inside Serenia's abandoned memory chamber. Hmm. Can't exactly ask for a front door key. Even if Cirrus did tell the protectors we want to study their rituals, he'd just better get back from mechanical age with those breeding kids soon. Otherwise, this whole plan is going nowhere. What a hideously exhausting day. Spent so many hours working underwater, I think my skin's turned permanently blue. But at least we're finally inside. Cyrus wants to put a lock on our new back door. <laughs> Using one of his infamous marble color codes, I'm sure. But that's his deal. I've still got to figure out... ...what to do about the fumes. Maybe if I... First night, we won't have to use the breeding kits. Of course, I'll wait for Cirrus to take his off first, just to be sure. Then start hauling in materials. Never seen little brother this keyed up before. But like I told them last night, getting the chair up and running is gonna take time. In theory, all it has to do is to stimulate the old fungus into doing what it wants to do naturally, remove a person's memories. But in order for our entire plan to work, we have to keep Father's body alive before, during, and after the process so one of us can use it later. I'm not even sure the fungus will be able to remove memories from a living body, no matter how much persuasion it gets. Decided to let Cirrus work on getting the chair operational while I started installing the life tanks. Still think this aspect of the plan is iffy, but then I don't intend to be the one who tests them. Cirrus is a genius. Not sure how he did it, but judging from the results of his first test today, looks like he did. <laughs> Almost felt sorry for the mouse. Okay, okay already. Just how many of these tests does he want to complete before we actually do something? Doesn't he realize that the longer we wait, the more likely it is some protector will catch on that something's wrong? One whole part of what we're doing takes place inside their dream world. They're going to see it eventually. Let's stop wasting time here and instead concentrate on setting up the bait we need to lure Father into his cell. Let's send Mother to Riven already. Getting real nervous now. The only thing that keeps me from panicking completely is this. I know Serenia's weakness. The Life Stone. They'll be lost without their Life Stone. Sure, it'll take a few days, but if I steal it out of the root chamber, the fungus will eventually lose its ability to remove memories. And if that happens, Serenia's civilization will be thrown into total chaos. <laughs> Might be fun to see it happen. But it also means our plan against Father will be ruined. So I'll do it, but only if it becomes necessary to cut and run. Horrible fight with Cirrus today. All I did was mention taking the stone and he was all over me. 
accused me of letting my insatiable desire for instant gratification screw up yet another one of his plans. Then he tried to lay the whole Narayan civil war debacle on me. Almost belted him right then and there. But the fight did show me one thing. My little brother really is a backstabbing weasel. These tests he keeps doing, there's only one conclusion they're heading to. Screw you, little brother. There's absolutely no way I'm gonna sit in that chair for you. I am out of here. you were going to redesign this room, but it looks just like it did before the fire. 
Not just like it did, my love. Look, the table is different. The first time I placed my hand on Serenia's linking panel, I remember thinking, this age will be unlike any I've journeyed to so far. And it was. The sky was crisp and clear. The rivers and waterfalls sparkled like diamonds. Even the worn paths threading through the canopies of stone took my breath away. I met a group of women who told me they had been expecting me, and as we talked late into the evening, they did seem to know a lot about me. Yet the more they explained why, the more impossible this story seemed. Of course, Catherine's ages have always struck me as impossible. Why should this one have been different? One of the stories the protectors told me. For... That is what they called themselves. Moves me to this day. Many lifetimes ago, a child from the village contracted a fever and died. His parents, who had loved him very much, decided to bury him under a waterfall and built a balloon to take him there. The parents' grief was so strong, however, that when they landed their balloon, they could only carry the child a short way. So they set him down beside a giant flower and slept. All night, the mother's tears never stopped flowing. Eventually, they sank through the ground and bathed the flower's roots. Moved by the tears, the flower told the parents to carry their child into her epistle. She would preserve his memory so they could visit him whenever they wished. Then the flower passed one of the tears back through her roots, turning it into a container to hold memories, and the father dove underwater to collect it. And that is how the memory chamber first displayed her power to the Serenians. Having read Catherine's descriptive book, I realized that the plant the protectors called the memory chamber is but the fruiting body of a massive fungus. Like any fungus, it recycles dead organic material into nutrients. In this case, filled memory globes. Since Yisha has recently asked to see Serenia, I will share this explanation with her, as I did her brothers when they were her age. Yet I cannot help thinking that my... scientific understanding of Serenia pales in comparison to the protector's simple tale. I had not fully realized how many years have passed since I visited this age. So when I stepped out of the linking cave with Yisha, I was pleased to see only a little has changed. A new group of women have replaced the protectors I knew, but they seem to be as friendly as the first. Yisha took an immediate liking to the one called Anya, and as we made our plans to spend more time here in the future, I felt confident our relationship with these women would be mutually beneficial. After an absence of several weeks, we returned to Serenia last night. Catherine agreed to accompany us, so we will stay for a week or more. This morning, I took advantage of Catherine's presence to re-explore alone. My route soon took me beyond Serenia's current memory chamber to the old abandoned flower which had served the village centuries ago. The man-made edifice surrounding the chamber looked much the same as I remembered although the flower itself was in far worse state of decay. I tried opening the door to explore inside, but found it locked. Just as well. Thirty years ago, the protectors told me how the delicate inner heart of the chamber emits a strong fragrance as part of its reproductive cycle. The closer the chamber gets to maturation, the more toxic this gas becomes, forcing the protectors to find a new flower for their use. No doubt the collected fumes inside the original chamber would have made it impossible for me to survive there very long. Catherine says I should have seen it coming, but this morning, Isha asked permission to meet Serena's ancestors. I tried to explain that the place the protectors called Dream is not real. How can it be? But she insists on finding out for herself. So what am I to do? I suppose it will do no harm to let her try. From what Anya told me, it should take several months for you to learn how to dream. 
It has certainly been a while since I've had enough free time to concentrate on the Crystal Viewer's attachment. Keeping my inquisitive daughter occupied may end up being beneficial for us all. I cannot believe how quickly time has flown. Today we attended a ceremony on Serenius celebrating Yisha's mastery of their customs. I must admit, although my doubts about the Dream Realm remain, seeing my daughter's pride as she received the Protector's necklace made it all seem worthwhile. Yisha said something strange during our writing lesson today. She thought it was sad that Catherine rarely writes anymore. And asked if we should explain that just because someone dies after visiting an age doesn't mean the age's writer is responsible. I knew immediately she was talking about my grandmother. Yet Catherine and I have never fully described Anna's death, so how she knew this information is a mystery. When I asked, she said her necklace had said something while she was holding Anna's picture. The answer was completely unsatisfactory. Yet I must admit, Isha had displayed an uncanny knowledge of things she never witnessed ever since receiving the Protector's gift. I'd like to examine this necklace more closely, but at the moment the situation with Cirrus and Akinar takes precedence. Perhaps after my friend leaves us tomorrow. years I've harbored a secret. People talk about my sons and the evil things they did. Yet still I remain strangely mute. I do not discuss my own actions that day or the rage I felt when I burned the two linking books that had snared them. Some people believe my sons died in those fires, but the truth is they did not. You're the only one I can confide in, my friend. So I'm asking you to come to Tamana. There are things I must tell you about my sons. I linked to Haven yesterday. The smell of its beach washed over me long before my vision cleared. With the veil of haze slowly lifting from my eyes, I forced myself to breathe very deeply. I had not told Atris I was doing this. He would have argued with me and told me again how dangerous it is to visit the prison ages before Tamana's linking chamber is built. But construction takes time, and I can no longer wait for him. The sight of the shipwreck rising out of the sea filled me with unexpected dread. Of course I'd known it would be there. I'd seen it countless times in Atris's viewer. But seeing it for real through slanted metal bars made me realize exactly what we'd done. I imagined the words my son would throw at me, and courage drained, away like summer wine. I did not try to signal him. I feel nothing but numbness now. It was my idea to write the chambers into existence, to bend the arts so that a secure room might be inserted in each age, with solid walls no force of man might break. Only then could we risk visiting our sons and leaving a Tamana linking book behind us when we left. It took me months to convince Atris this could work. But now that the chambers exist, and I will speak to my sons for the first time in years, I find myself not knowing what to say. 
How will I explain our decision to leave them prisoners? If hardship and isolation have not caused them to repent, as was our hope, what words will soothe the anger in their souls? Weeks have passed, and still I have not found the courage to link again. Perhaps it is just as well. Atris was not pleased when he learned what I had done. He begged me to have more patience, then put extra pressure on the Guild of Stonemasons to finish. Today they informed us that Tamana's chamber will be ready in two days. Had we been able to use the art to create it as we did with the ones in the prison ages, it would have already been finished. But things always take longer to build when you must do it by hand. Now Atris is looking forward to having our bedroom back. I should be too, but I keep wondering how I will be able to sleep there, knowing our sons are just a wall away. I worry how they'll act when they greet us, how different they will be from the laughing boys I remember playing with toy bolts in Mist's reflection pool. They were happy then. We all were happy. Anna was still with us, and the love we shared as a family knew no bounds. Then Anna died, and our cozy world unraveled. To deal with the loss of his grandmother, Atris buried himself in work, spending less and less time with our sons. At eight years old, Cirrus must have seen this as rejection. But even then his pride was too well formed to let it show. And as for Akinar, he'd never known how to appropriately channel his emotions. I do not excuse the crimes committed. Cirrus and Akinar shattered so many lives in far worse ways than Anna's death shattered ours. It's for this reason that I have stood by Atris's decision and left my sons imprisoned all these years. But I... cannot escape my own culpability in this. For when Cirrus and Akinar needed me most, I was too consumed by sorrow to see. I am being torn in two. I am trapped between a mother's love for her children and a woman's loyalty to her husband. I don't know. It is so hard. I watch Atris and Akinar trying to communicate, and it feels like knife blades ripping through my heart. They don't know how to relate to each other. Akinar speaks only from emotions, and Atris fears he's made his son a savage. Only my presence keeps things from fraying. It's easier with Cirrus. They share a love of science, and Cirrus's willingness to discuss advancements he's made ignites a similar excitement in Atris. Yet even then, Atris doesn't believe. He's unwilling to trust, because he knows what monsters they have been. I must find a way to resolve this. I must break through Atris's doubts and get him to see what he cannot. It's been a long time since I've written in this journal. I thought perhaps I had lost it, but while repotting plants in my study, I found it behind one of the incubators. It must have fallen there when Atris reconfigured the generator. No matter, I have it now. Yisha asked me today if Atris and I are still... arguing. She was seated at the patio table, her head bowed over her school books. She was concentrating so hard on tracing a Garohavati, I don't think she saw my reaction. We have always been careful not to disagree in front of her. I should have realized how insightful she can be. I watched my daughter forming the Dani words so carefully, and I remembered how easy it had been to convince Atris to start teaching her the art. He never did teach Cirrus or Akinar. He started to. He wrote Jananin specifically for that purpose, but after a while, he feared they would abuse it, so he stopped. He's not worried with Yisha. He sees how curious she is about life, and how full of warmth she can be. It's obvious how much he adores her, as, I think, do Cirrus and Akinar. If there is any hope in this for all of us, it will be through her. I must not let family tensions upset her. 
Tomorrow I will speak to Atris about my going to Tay for a few days. Perhaps time away will help me gain perspective and discover what it is I need to do.
health. Patience. Can't forget his patience. Understand? You understand me?
I cannot believe I resisted linking here for so long. Father's warning kept me away. He said Haven was an age of great wealth, but visiting it would be dangerous without him. Lying serpent. Should have known he would say anything to keep Cirrus and me under his control. I despise him. But look, Father. Look who's under whose control now. Stinking rain has not let up much since I arrived. It gets almost too quiet when... It does, except for the distant screams of animals. Wonder what exists beyond those cliffs. Too wet to find out tonight, but there should be plenty of time for treasure hunting tomorrow. Judging by the chests in this wreck, I will not be disappointed. <laughs> Oh, but won't Cyrus be enraged when he sees I got all the emeralds first? Been slashing through the jungle all week and have yet to run into any people. What did you do, Father? Get them to turn this island into some kind of wild animal park? It would be just like you to convince the stupid idiots to do that. Have to hand it to you, though. The heads on some of these beasts will look really good on my walls. Got my first taste of primate today. I was cutting a path through the jungle when one of the stupid buggers clunked me from behind with a piece of fruit. It scared the hell out of me. I whipped around ready to slice and dice, but it let out this ear-piercing shriek. It must have been a signal to its buddies because they all took off into their nests. <laughs> Too bad Mr. Shrieker wasn't fast enough. Man, is it hot. Actually starting to like these infernal thunderstorms. They ruin a good day of hunting, but at least they cool things down for a while. Surprised my greedy brother hasn't shown up yet. He's got to know I skipped out on him in Serenia after we called that little truce. He's insane if he thinks his plan there will work. We should just kill Father and be done with it. Then again, maybe I should link back to Mist and convince Cirrus to set the old man free here in Haven. After all these weeks of practice, my hunting and tracking skills have really improved. No way, no way, no way. It's gone to be here somewhere. Got to be. I searched and searched and searched. Where's the blasted linking book? I have to pull myself together. Come up with a plan. 
That's what Cirrus would do, wouldn't it? Isn't it? He... Where the hell is Cirrus? Doesn't matter. Need a base. Some place to hold up. Some... Stop it! Think. The ship. It'll do for now. Till I build something better. Got to be easier to get into, though. Easier. But protected against intruders. Got to protect myself, right? Good. That's good. That's... I'm gonna kill you for this, old man! I slashed the beast. There was blood spurting everywhere. I need a better spear. Disappeared down the wind tunnel. It was a very successful day today. Mostly Karnaks. Figuring out how to use their fishing habits against them was sheer genius. Can't escape. I must... Wrongful imprisonment. Where is Cirrus? Past few days, too much blood. I don't remember killing so many animals. Is something else here? Something big? Second predator hunting me? Why haven't I seen it yet? Figured it out. Wicked brother. Lying tongue of snake. Tricked me with truth. Serenia. <laughs> Cirrus is trapped too! While I... Machines. He linked to Spire in search of plunder. <laughs> Spire! Father's other dangerous age. Miserable camodile. Bloody animal. Nearly ripped my leg off. Pulled vanishing act and... Just wait till hunting post is finished. Saw some more tracks. Rainwash most of them away. But then I... Found them, but definitely tracks. Sneaky bastard. Think he waits. And then there was the fifth kill site. Look fresh. Horny was bigger. Smelled me coming and took off. What is this thing? My god, the size. Impossible. Hands still shaking. Didn't expect. Didn't expect attack. Didn't realize. Magnificent. Still, see him rearing out of sea, water spilling down gills. Such malice, such death in his eyes. Sun sinking behind, reflection so bright, nearly blinded. Must have planned it that way, must have. No. But I'm alive, Sea Spawn. Still alive. And I will defeat you. As death is my witness, I shall decorate my kingdom with your bones.
That's it. You know you want the fruit. Come on, little guy. That's it! Figure out which holes to put the hammers in. Seriously, how hard's it gonna be? Worst part's gonna be the foundation. Once that's in, got to be better than sleeping in the wreck, right?
Kirby. <laughs>
It's too late. They're all dead. All of them. Not sure I can do this. Pan feels awkward. Keeps slipping. Been so long since I used one. But what else is there? What else to do? Went back to wreck today. First time since moving into house. Found his bones exactly how I left them. Except clean now. Bleached white by the sea. How many times have I replayed it since then? Sun sinking into the waves. Tip of my spear. Gleaming wet with the poison. See myself crouching low near the rock, so sure he will come because of his mate. Sometimes in my head, it happens different. Poison gets diluted, or one of her ropes snaps and breaks. He rears back, spear misses. Somehow they both get away. And we all get one more day worth living for. Reset traps today. Swamp water corroded one of them. Forced to go to depot to fix. Coming back, saw a Kamadile take down a Zeftir. Moved with such precision. Not a single gesture wasted. Zephyr probably didn't feel a thing. It's not what I expected, living lakeside. It's calmer, not as windy. But rain still beats down like in the wreck, and it's hot, still hot. Only real difference is the screens, a lot closer now on all sides, starting to get on my nerves. Can't sleep. Too many screams. And when I close my eyes, the things I see, the faces. My God, Cirrus, did we really kill so many? Added it up, best I could, eight years. Three since I killed the last Zerpati. Keep thinking I should do something for him. Play some kind of tribute next to the bones. Totem pole, maybe. God knows. Carving it would keep me busy for a while. Maybe I can make one for each of them. What's the use? What's the use? Can't go on like this. I can't think. Have to do something. Keep my mind off the dreams. Maybe, maybe go south for a few days, sleep outside. My godfather, did it have to be the same? Two weeks working my way through the south jungle and for what? More of the same, more of the same empty nothingness. Can't take it anymore. Can't live like this. Karnax got in while I was away. Forgot how agile they are. Braver, too, when they're hunting in groups. Been breeding like mad ever since I killed their primary predator. Should probably do something about that. But maybe I can redesign one end of the bridge. Create some kind of lock to keep them out. Went back to the south jungle today, hoping I'd missed some. Thing. Saw a group of mangries playing under their nests. Thought about replenishing supplies, but couldn't do it. They just looked too peaceful. Eventually turned to go and spied one of them watching me. Their lookout, I suppose. Wonder how long he knew I was there. Ink supply getting low. Watering it down, but might try to make more. 
the way the channel would tree dwellers once taught me. Found some petals in the south jungle that might work for the ink. Picked a few to take back as an experiment. While picking them, I noticed something odd about the mangrees. In the north, they all scatter as soon as they spot me, but the south tribe only looks curious. Must be because I never hunted them. New ink seems okay. Would prefer a better color, though. I'll head back to the south jungle in the morning, see if I can find different varieties. I don't believe it. Went back to gather more petals and found a bunch of them already picked. They were lying in a pile where I'd been working. Mangrees must have done it. Imitating me? Spent most of the morning in the watchtower trying to observe from a distance. Find out how they act when I'm not there. Couldn't see much though, trees are too thick. Would like to get closer somehow. I suppose I could build another post, but it'd have to be different this time. Not a lot left I can take from the wreck. Kinda like the idea of going all natural. How the heck did Savidro's people do it? Been weaving support branches all day and my arms and chest muscles are killing me. Mangri sure got a kick out of watching though. One of them even stopped playing long enough to come over and give me advice. At least that's how it seemed. Wouldn't stop chirruping at me. Made me want to rig up another sound system, see if I can try and talk back. Oh my god. It can't be. It can't. This evening, I was sketching in the post, trying to get their expressions right. Mangries were playing that game they liked to play, fruit tossing. Ball must have rolled under the post. All of a sudden I heard this cry I'd never heard before. A sequence of drawn out highs and lows. Looked up and found all of them looking at me, pointing at the ball and making that sound. Like they were calling a name. My name. They've given me a name. What am I supposed to do with this, father? What am I supposed to do?
expression right. It's something... Something about the eyes. Oh. 
It's a gift, Akinar. I made it for you. Don't you like it? No. No. I mean, yes. 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 I like it. It's just... It's so soft. Almost forgot what soft feels like.
there you are. My sisters say you are a friend. But if that is true, why does everything fall apart when you are here? Lifestone is missing. Someone diverted the water course and took it out of the road champ. You are a stranger here. You cannot begin to imagine the threat this poses to my people. Memory Chamber needs that stone to survive. It nourishes her, keeps her strong and healthy, so she can collect our memories after we die. Without it, we may never see our loved ones again. I must alert the village. There are more stones in the Southern Hills, but it takes time to find them. If you truly are a friend, you will go to the Hall of Spirits and alert my sisters. Although, if they're still traveling in dream, they may already know. Do not be afraid. My sisters and I can speak with you now. Anya told us you needed help. So while you were exploring this physical manifestation of Serenia, we decided to travel her mirror realm, a world in which our ancestors have great power and which we call Dream. We asked the ancestors to show us what happened to Yisha, but the things they revealed did not make any sense. We think it's because the message is intended for you. This disturbed us, for it means you must travel to dream, something which you must never do without a spirit guide. Normally, finding the guide best suited to your true nature takes time, but we have decided to help by examining the weave of your past actions. Please, place your hand on the claw. It will allow us to know which guide you must seek. Child of water, or so the weave shows. 
You appreciate the beauty and richness of life around you. You are confident in your ability to succeed, but willing to seek help when answers seem elusive. You must seek a water god to accompany you. Go to the stone forest and seek him in the pools he likes to inhabit. The mark you now bear in you will gain his attention. Be carrying the offering that most pleases his senses, and he should agree to accompany you in dream. There is only one such offering. Once you have succeeded, proceed to the memory chamber. Zanika will be waiting for you there. This cloth is now yours to keep. Do with it as you will. You have done well, Yisha. So now, in recognition of all that you have learned, and in accordance with the customs of my people, I present you this amulet of memories. May you always find wisdom in dream. Time seems to be against us. Fortunately, there is little I can say to prepare you for what you are about to experience. The Mirror Realm is different for everyone who travels there. But your guide will be waiting in his true form to meet you, and will explain what you really need to know. Please, lie down. Normally, I would remain until you return, but with everything that's happened today, I cannot. So, should you decide to leave Dream without getting the answers you seek, you will have to return to it later without help. In that case, just focus on the all-seeing eyes of the ancestors, and you should be able to travel there. Are you ready? Then gaze on the eyes high above you, 
and let your journey begin. you expected is it traveler you are here because you want to find the answer to something that troubles you why then wouldn't dreams seem dark and mysterious at first do not be afraid the fragrance of your offering still lingers. It pleases me. So I shall light this darkness for you and lead you to the ones you call the ancestors. He is not an ancestor. Like yourself, he is but a traveler here, and if his guide brings him close, you should touch him to experience as much of dream as you can. Dream is often visited by such creatures, temporary inhabitants seeking the enlightenment they cannot find in their waking lives. They do not have the wisdom to shape dream, as the ancestors do, but they can still learn much by seeing what possibilities exist here. Sometimes, 
They come just to seek distraction. Come, I sense the arrival of one who does have the power to influence dream. How odd. She resembles an ancestor, but she is not yet one of them. Nor is she a traveler, for I sense no waking mind to return to. It's as if that connection has been severed prematurely. I do not understand how this is possible, but this is the one you seek. The ancestors approach. They will attempt to communicate with her. The ancestors are willing to shape dream for you, but they need your help. By brushing against each one, you can impart some of your own energy to it. This will place each ancestor in closer harmony with the others. When all are as one, the combined wisdom will reveal the answer you need. Go on, try it. I shall be silent until you succeed. But should you grow too frustrated, signal me by touching your amulet. I will then send you back to Serenia immediately, but without the answer you need. You have succeeded. I can feel the ancestors' wisdom at work. Pay attention, for you will never see this revelation again. Goodbye, traveler, until we journey together again. You've returned. I had hoped to discuss your experiences in Dream, but you can't always count on hope, can you? 
not when so much of what the ancestors have shown us has already come true. The others have gone to alert the village. I must go inside and protect the memories. I will not allow anyone to enter until this crisis has ended. I wish there was another way. But in all of our dreams, the last task always fell onto you. Good luck. It's you. Thank God you've come. Aknar's kidnapped my little sister. He says he'll kill her if I don't help him steal Serenia's treasures. Look, I know you have no reason to trust me. You saw me blow up the harvester, but I only did it to stop Aknar from poisoning the memory chamber. His confinement on Haven drove him totally insane. All he cares about now is destroying everything Father created. We have to stop him. Go back to Tamana and find my father. Explain everything that's happened here. For some reason, Agnar is terrified of father. Maybe if you bring him here, the three of us can somehow maneuver my sick brother into a trap. I'll try to get Yisha away from him while you're gone. Now go. Go! Before it's too late.
You gotta take that mask off now, little brother, trust me. The air's fine. Maybe a little stale, but the fans I've put in should take care of that. Wait till you see what I did with the flower. you. You've come to rescue me. Over there, there's a lever that'll set me free. Hurry up before Aknar comes back. What are you waiting for? He'll kill us! Move! Use the silver lever. Turn it and you'll set me free. No! Stop! This is not Yisha! What? Zerus used the machine. He forced the memory chamber to remove all of her memories. Liar! This is Cirrus, I tell you! This is crazy! He killed Cirrus when he tried to save me! Seriously, would I kill my own brother? Yes! No. He removed Yisha's memories. And then he used the machine plant his own memories inside her head. What? This is Cirrus, I tell you. Look, he's got the life stone. Serenia's memory chamber can't survive without the Shut life Shut up! Please, I'm your little sister. He's just playing games with you. You see, he's a killer. No. No. I told you already. I only stole this. Stop Cyrus from hurting Father, but I was wrong. He was after Yisha all along. No, he's the one who kidnapped me, not Cyrus. Look, we have to set everybody's memories back right again. The Amber Lever. Turn the Amber Lever to begin the process. No, you'll kill me if you do that. Hooray! Before the memory chamber gets too weak to power the transfer. Don't listen to him. No, you fool! My performance was perfect! Thank you. You may have won this round, brother, but it's not over. No! Cirrus! Don't! Oh, something has gone wrong. Yisha's memories are not coming back again. Memory 
chamber can't fail now! Listen to me. The memory chamber is dying. And if it dies, it'll stop the transfer. And I don't know what that will do to Yisha's mind. I can keep the chamber alive using the stone, but you have got to find a way to reach her. Go to the dream world and try and find a way of getting through to her memories. It's the only chance we have. Use the other chair, but hurry. I don't know how much time you'll have after I use the stone. You are a most unusual traveler, my friend. The vision you witnessed here last time served you well, yet still you see dream as dark and slightly dangerous. Why? I see the answer in your need. You are not just looking for visions this time. You seek the very memories themselves. The one you know as Yisha is still here. She's been unable to return to her waking mind because her connection with it was severed prematurely. Come, I will take you to her. Yet the strands of dream are shifting, even as we approach. I sense the connection reopening. So when we reach her... Interloper! That traveler has no guide. He's using Yisha's memories to remain anchored in dream. Otherwise, he would be lost and quickly crushed amid dream's constantly shifting waves of possibility. Why is she not aware of him? There, do you see the anchors he's using? They are very powerful memories, which both Yisha and the Traveler have in common. Somehow he's jumbled them up and is using the confusion to hide himself from her. 
she cannot return to her waking mind while he is attached. You can release her. By entering both memories and replaying them correctly, you may startle the traveler enough so that he reveals himself. I will send you into the first one now and await your return. They break so. Well... 
Daddy is really good at chess. You should play him. I'd like to, sis, but I don't have a chess set. You can make one, just like you made my spirit guide. I could, but it's really hard to carve figurines that small. They break so easily. Well, maybe Mom and Dad could give you a set as a present. I'll tell them to when I link home. Ha! <laughs> right. And I suppose you'll tell them to make it out of the same rock as this chamber. That way I'll never be able to break it. It's working. We must move swiftly. The traveler knows what you're doing, and will try to impede you. Go. See this glow, little sister? See how round and smooth and empty it is? When I turn the switch, the chair you're sitting in will activate. Lights will go on. And everything that's you will be sucked out of your body. Leaving behind the perfect disguise for me to step into. Father and mother will teach you the art. Never knowing it's really me who's doing the learning. Of course, I'll kill them as soon as I know how to write ages. Then I'll put my new memories back in my body and no one will be able to stop. You have done well, Traveler. 
The one you know as Yisha has rediscovered her waking mind. Even now, she begins to return there. The interloper cannot follow her. The strands of dream close in on him, and without a guide to shield him, he will be completely crushed under their weight. Return now to your waking life until the next time you wish to travel in dream. friend. Seems I'm always thanking you. Catherine has taken Isha to Tay. She's all right. She really is a strong little girl. But uh, she's going to need time. She loved Akinar and, and Cirrus very much. God, this is hard. As if a door inside me is closed despite everything I've done to keep it open. But in a way, maybe that's good. My sons may be gone, but my daughter is safe. And now Catherine and I can give her all the love and attention she'll need to move on with her life. Just as we must move on with ours. Endings are just another form of beginning, I guess. And the harder an end is to face, the more hope we bring with us to the next beginning. <laughs> 